Now, I'm not trying to make a list of our failures. I'm not up here to, to, to bring doom and gloom to everybody here. And I'm not even trying to target our next campaigns. I'm not saying what we should be talking about. Um, I'm simply pointing out that this stuff is hard. It is an uphill battle. And while we're pedaling as hard as we can, we're not moving up that hill very much. And to be honest, in some cases, I'm not even sure we're facing in the right direction. Let me ask you this, and this is just rhetorical. What is the goal of the skeptical, critical thinking movement? Now, the answer may be different for everyone. And, and it, for somebody, it might be the abolishment of quack medicine. It, it might be the, the, the eventual removal of all religious influence in life. You know, you might have some specific examples. And, and sometimes, you know, I wonder, are these reasonable goals? Can we really remove specific examples of pseudoscience? And they, they usually disappear over their own time. But can that really be done? I, I'm not sure. Like I said earlier, our brains don't work that way. You remove one bit of, of this sort of thing, and something else just comes in to fill the space. Now, I'm also of the teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime sort of thought. My goal is not to get rid of anti-science per se. It's to help people walk away from it themselves, to teach them how to think, and to give them the ability to use reason when, when thinking something through. And in, oh, thank you. Um, it gets better. Um, now, I think that the, uh, the overarching goal of the movement that we're part of is to attain a rational, reasonable world. And not one without emotion, not one without passion. That's a, that's a fallacy that, that we're like, that clearly, uh, clearly we experience love and joy like everyone else. It's just a world that likes reality the way it is. In other words, teach a man to reason and he'll think for a lifetime. Of course, oh, I, I can wait for these smattering of applause, thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, that there are narrow goals as well. Sometimes we need to keep creationists out of the classroom. We need to stop fundamentalists from trying to amend the Constitution. And we need to prevent faith-based bigotry or the alt-meddlers, as I like to call them, from spreading diseases. Um, in some cases, that means specific debunking. And that's okay. That has to happen. You have to debunk certain things or else I'll just keep going. So by showing, and again, again, wrote this several days ago, um, by showing people, for example, optical illusions and that the eye is easily fooled, that, and I can say that's why shadows point different directions in Apollo pictures, and maybe they can understand that, you know, what they see isn't the way things really are. Your brain can be fooled. And people can learn to generalize from specifics given time and repetition and, and practice. It takes practice to think like this. And specific bunk is worth debunking, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. But that's not the point I'm trying to make here. Old hands at this game, and, and you're out there. You know what logical fallacies are. You know about the, the different types of uh, cor uh, biases and the different things that, that go wrong in our brain. And you know what methods of logic to use, and you know where to get good data. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. And if you're new here and you're new to this type of skeptical movement, talk to your neighbors, right? That's what the bars in the, in the, in the casino are for. Uh, talk about what we're doing here, and I think, I think you'll, you'll like it. So I'm not here to talk about the actual toolbox of critical thinking. I'm here to talk about shop safety, I suppose. Everyone knows a hammer is for pounding nails, but not everyone knows how to wield that hammer. You don't swing wildly and you don't use all your strength because you might pound in the nail, but you're also going to destroy the wall. And Sometimes a focused movement is more effective. Smaller swings that are aimed well. It, it takes more swings to accomplish your goal, but in the end you have a nail in the wood with minimal damage to that wood. Um, well, all right, thank you. <laughs> look, look, you, you give it your all or just let it wait. You know, I, it's okay. Um, I'm not that invested in the applause, it's okay. How do we attain that goal, the more rational, reasonable world? And I'm going to stress that word, real, uh, world. Because therein lies the root of what I'm trying to talk about. Right now in this movement, in this movement of ours, there's a lot of discussion about this topic. And I should say discussion, because a lot of this discussion is not terribly productive. A lot of it involves name calling. A lot of it involves insults. And it, it, there's entrenched belief masking itself, I think, as rational thought. People strongly believe in skepticism so much, they're not willing to question it themselves, not willing to question their own stance. And I could give you specific examples of myself as well. I'm not, I'm not going to do that right now. But what I see is that um, hubris is running rampant and that egos are just out of check. And sometimes logic in those situations is left by the wayside. 
I could go into specifics. I'm not going to. You can find these for yourself. Uh, you probably know where to look. For example, um, there's this argument about atheism versus accommodationism. You can go there. You will find quite a bit of bitter, acrimonious, and irrational arguments on, uh, on those, those discussions. I certainly have my opinion on that argument, and I assure you they are strong ones. Uh, but again, specifics aren't my point here. What I'm more concerned with is our demeanor, the way we do this. Remember, the odds are against us. There are more of them than there are of us. And our brains are not wired for what we do. It's taken a lot of practice. It, as the old saying goes, it takes, you know, it, it's hard to reason someone out of a position they didn't reason themselves into in the first place. And look, we have to admit that our reputation amongst the majority of the population is not exactly stellar, right? So where does this leave us? How do we attain that goal of a rational, reasonable, enlightened society? And the key is obvious, to me at least, it's communication, right? The best idea ever thought of in the history of humanity is useless unless someone communicates it. It will die in the test tube. And in our case, what we're communicating here to people is not something they necessarily want to hear. So our demeanor, how we deliver this message, takes on crucial, crucial importance. So again, I ask you, to remind you. How many of you lost your faith, your belief, because someone called you an idiot, right? I suspect that most of you, like me, you lost your beliefs gradually. It didn't happen overnight. I didn't wake up one day and decide to disbelieve or it just happened. It, it took a while, months, years, I, I don't know, to be honest, I don't remember, but it wasn't overnight. And it wasn't because someone insulted me or got in my face. We saw Randy on those clips earlier today and I'm not sure exactly about the timing when he did the psychic surgery, but I remember watching that and laughing and laughing and thinking that that was awesome, that that's a terrific way to do it, to make people laugh and to tell them it's a trick and it, it, you, know, you, you engage them and it's, it's funny. And that really helped me become an active skeptic and, and, to, and to do what I do today. And, and, you know, and that was 20 years ago. I mean, I really started thinking about my own beliefs. I was a huge, I've, I've mentioned this many times in previous TAMs, UFOs and, and, and out-of-body experiences and the Bermuda Triangle, I was huge into that stuff. And you know what? And it, now look where I am, right? Uh, I used to be a believer in all of that, but today I write a skeptical blog. I've written a skeptical book. And for a year, I was the president of one of the premier skeptical organizations on the planet. You may have heard of it. Um, <laughs> And I suppose you could call me a skeptical success story. I didn't, I didn't seek out to do this, but it, I guess the way I did it worked and it resonated with some people and I'm really glad about that. But if someone had told me when I was 13 years old that my belief in UFOs was stupid and that I was an idiot and that stuff clearly isn't true, where would I be sitting right now? Wouldn't be here. The insults when we do insult people, and it happens, they fly for a lot of reasons. And I suspect that frustration is one of them. Active skeptics, like me, like, like everyone out there who's been doing this for a long time, we've been fighting irrationality for years, and it gets frustrating when the same arguments come up over and over again, long debunked tropes that are clearly wrong, and yet they're, they're thrown at us again and again and again. And, and then you know what happens is that the, the pseudoscientists change their arguments slightly and it's enough to maybe fool the public or fool the media. It doesn't fool us, us but you know, that happens. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Intelligent design. <coughs> um, little palate cleanser there. Um, anger, right? Anger is a natural reaction. And it's a natural reaction when someone yells at us and when they frustrate us and when they hurt us. But anger, I read this in a, in a book, Mary Roach, uh, you probably heard of her. Um, she's got a, a new book coming out and, and there's a line in it um, that says, um, anger seeks a victim. And I thought that was beautiful. Anger searches for a victim. We have to be um, careful not to personalize that anger too much. Now look, anger is good, it's needed, it's a motivator, right? It gets you out of bed sometimes. And I speak from personal experience, I get angry. But it's also a loaded weapon and we need to be exceedingly careful where we aim that weapon. It's too tempting to want results right now. I want to change somebody's mind while I'm talking to them, while I'm face to face with it. It's human nature to want that, to want instant gratification and to win an argument.